Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. Let's get you straight to the White House, where President Trump and members of the Coronavirus Task Force are holding a briefing. Let's listen in. Uh, in New York, the first time where the deaths were less from the previous day, that's the first drop so far. So maybe that's a good sign. It could be. And uh, the hospital levels are starting to uh, perhaps decrease. It's been very short, but perhaps decrease. So we wish Governor Cuomo and uh, all of the people in New York great. And uh, New Jersey, your governor's doing a great job. He's doing a great job in New Jersey. They got hit very hard. Uh, I just want to say that the full power of the American government and American enterprise, it, it really is. This is an all-out military operation that we've waged, and especially over the last number of weeks. Fifty states and territories have now been approved for major disaster declarations, which is very unusual. Thanks to the Army Corps of Engineers, New York City's Javits Center is now one of the largest hospitals in the United States. It's designated for treatment of the virus patients and staff by hundreds of federal medical personnel deployed from two Army hospital units, and they're doing a great job. This was something that uh, we didn't expect to do, but uh, they needed help in New York, and we sent uh, federal troops, not only troops, we also sent a lot of uh, very talented doctors, nurses, first responders. People are now uh, running Javits. Also, as you know, the USNS Comfort, which is in New York, there's been a lot of publicity about that coming in, and all that was not supposed to be for the virus at all under any circumstances. Uh, but it looks like uh, more and more we're going to be using it for that. So we'll see. Uh, that was supposed to be for people having other medical problems. But it's very interesting because there are virtually no cars on the road, no motorcycles on the road, no no uh, anything on the road. Uh, things that would normally be taken care of, we don't see anymore. So we haven't seen that in a long time. It's uh, perhaps a positive. But the ship is ready, and if, if it has to, if we need it, if we need it for the virus, we will uh, be using it for that. They'd prefer not, uh, for obvious reasons. But if for any reason they need it, uh, it's ready, willing, and able. We have the best doctors, the best military leaders, and the best logistics professionals anywhere in the world. And we're orchestrating a massive federal response, unlike anything our country has ever seen or done. We've never done anything like this. And more and more, we're using our medical people because of the fact that Jurisdiction states, uh, in particular, New York, New Jersey, the Connecticut area, Long Island now has become a hot spot, part of New York. Uh, we're sending a lot of things, a lot of supplies, and now we're sending personnel where it's needed, military personnel. As of Tuesday, we'll, we'll have deployed over 3,000 military and public health professionals to New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and other parts of our country. 3,000, and that number is going up. And uh, we hope we're seeing a leveling off in the hottest spots of them all. So we'll see. You'll be seeing that over the next few days. Let's see what happens. But we're prepared. In the last seven days, FEMA has airlifted critical supplies and protective equipment from every corner of Earth. They're coming from all over the planet, including from within the United States, where the equipment isn't as necessary. Since last Sunday, cargo planes have delivered almost, listen to this, 300 million gloves, almost 8 million masks, and 3 million gowns, and uh, many more fully loaded cargo planes are right now on the way. Three big ones landed today. And these supplies are being distributed directly to the hospitals and healthcare providers all across the nation. So that that uh, massive amount of material that we're getting in is being delivered all over the country. Tomorrow, we'll deliver an additional 600,000 N95 masks to New York City to take care of the needs of the public hospital system. Uh, it was a request of Mayor de Blasio. We've been working great with Mayor de Blasio. Uh, getting him a lot of stuff. He's working very hard, I can tell you that. And uh, we're working really very hard with New York City and with New York State. And at the request of Congressman Lee Zeldin out in Long Island, we will also be delivering another 200,000 N95 masks to Suffolk County, where they need it very badly. So we're getting that out on an emergency basis. Should be there tomorrow. 
We'll also be deploying millions of N95 masks to other locations that Admiral Polovchak will detail shortly. The Admiral will be up in just a couple of minutes. Over the last 24 hours, FEMA has delivered an additional 500 ventilators to New Jersey. 500. And again, uh, the Governor has been very thankful. We're working very hard with New Jersey, including building hospitals. We've also sent an additional 200 ventilators to Louisiana, definite hotspot. 300 to Michigan, working very well, I think, with the Governor. Amazingly, 600 will be uh, going or have gone to Illinois. And, I mean, there's a governor I hear him complaining all the time. Uh, Pritzker, I hear him. He's always complaining. And yet, I just said, give me a list of a couple of the things we've done in Illinois. And we're building a 2,500-bed hospital in McCormick Place. That's the big convention center in Chicago. And uh, — we're helping to staff it and probably will end up staffing it because he's not able to do what you're supposed to be able to do as a governor. He has not performed well. And we're also sending 100 ventilators to Massachusetts. So we have 600 to Illinois. We have 100 to Massachusetts. We have 300 to Michigan. We have 200 to Louisiana. We have 500 ventilators, 500 going to New Jersey. And this is being done by FEMA, being delivered by FEMA, and it's, uh, it's some job. Just think of that when you think about 500 ventilators. A ventilator is a big deal. We're also establishing a federal medical station in the Washington, D.C. area to help Washington, D.C., and working very closely with the mayor and everybody in Washington, D.C. At the same time, Governor Inslee, we appreciate this, of Washington State has returned 400 ventilators, which can now be deployed elsewhere in our country. So uh, the state of Washington's done very well. Uh, they won't be needing some of the ventilators that have been sent, about 400. That's a lot. And uh, we appreciate that he's able to give them back. He feels confident that they are in good shape for the coming weeks until we can declare a final victory. In the days ahead, America will endure the peak of this terrible pandemic. Our warriors in this Life and death battle are the incredible doctors and nurses and healthcare workers on the front line of the fight. We pledge to them our eternal gratitude and everlasting support. They make all of us very proud. Our country is very proud. We have people, they love our country. The world loves our country, most of it, probably all of it. They just don't say it. <laughs> 